Hello everyone! Our test today is to make Cinema 4D's wood shader a little bit less scary. It's definitely a beast of a shader with a multitude of options that aren't so easy to figure out, but once we get past the hurdle, we will immediately start getting better results. Let's get to it. We will start by adding a cube with a tiny bit of rounding. Easy so far. Now let's create a new material, disable the reflectance, since we don't care about that at the moment, and then on the color channel we add the wood shader. Here you can see it, but it's the very last option underneath the surface category. Let's also fire up the interactive render region so we can get some feedback while we're working. As you can see, the default result is definitely not the best one. Let's go through the options to decipher them a little bit. One thing you need to remember is that a lot of these values work in pairs, and this is part of why the shader is difficult to understand, because it's not immediately clear. So, uh, think of grainy and grainy scale as one group, and wavy and wavy scale as another. We'll go through them in a bit, but let's concentrate on the first options here. Scale, as you can imagine, scales the whole wood effect. One thing to notice here is that you can achieve the same result the scale option does by just resizing the texture. Let's see if what I'm saying is right. Let's create a new cube with a default wood material at 100%. Our previous material has a scale of 50. Click on the texture mode, enable the axis mode so we can scale the texture, and now let's scale everything to 50%. If we compare it with the other material, we see that they look the same. And this is another small thing that might have escaped you and as a result it makes understanding the shader even more difficult. I prefer to scale the texture and then micromanage through the shader. So let's do that. I'm going to resize to, let's say, 300%. Another thing to note here is that movement and rotation of the texture will give you different results, which is perfect for refining our texture. So if, for example, we want to move this area a bit more to the right, we can just move our texture accordingly. The same happens with rotation. If we rotate it, we project the texture differently. This is one of the more important parts when creating and refining our shader. Now let's go back to the other options. Stretch mostly affects how the wavy lines will look like on the sides of our cube. So if you think of this part as the part where the tree is cut in real life, uh, this part here would be the surrounding area around the bark. Usually this area is a bit less wavy than the mid part of the tree bark. So if we give it a value of uh, 1 or 2, you will notice that the sides are mostly the same as the center. As we start increasing the value, the lines get more straightened out. Ring scale basically increases or decreases the amount of rings in our bark. As you can see here we have a few rings, but if we lower the value, we will start getting a few more. Let's leave it around somewhere 3%. The grainy value adds basically noise to the shader in order to create more detail. Let's have a really small value like 1%. As you can see, the result is very smooth with clearly defined areas. Once we start increasing the value, these areas get a bit more detailed with fine noise. Let's try something around 40%. Now the grainy scale value defines how scaled the noise will be. So if we increase the value to let's say 10%, the noise scale will increase. So now we have fewer fine details and a more splotchy-like effect. Make a mental note on that, since you will need to play with those values a lot when trying to refine and adjust the look of your shader. Let's have something around uh, 7%. And let's uh, reduce the graininess a little bit. As mentioned before, wavy and wavy scale work together. A smaller wavy value creates less waves on the rings. Let's try 30% but uh, since these two values work together, if we start decreasing the scale of the wavy noise, we will start getting wavy lines again. So, if we decrease the wavy scale value from 50 to 20, we will start getting waves again. It can get very confusing at the beginning, but once you know how it works, you're all set. Let's go with something around 20% for the wavy value, and 100% for the wavy scale. 
And uh, finally, we have the annual rings option. This will completely confuse you, but bear with me for a minute. So, if we enable this option, our shader completely changes, which is nothing you would normally expect. But think of it as an override feature in order to get a very specific effect, which is basically the concentric circle effect you get when you cut a tree. The older the tree is, the more circles you see. The other two values are similar to the wavy and wavy scale options. Again, don't forget these two work together. So with a smaller uh, wavy rings value, we get less wavy lines. And if we increase the scale of the noise, we will get even straighter lines. The options above still work as expected, but the annual rings basically override the overall look. So if, for example, we reduce the ring scale, we will get more rings, and if we increase the graininess, we will get more grain. If we increase the grain scale, the scale of the noise used for graininess will increase. So the values still work, it's just that the annual rings option just overrides everything in order to create a specific effect. Super confusing if you don't know it, but now that you do, you will be able to achieve exactly the result you want. And uh, finally, the last piece of the puzzle in order to create nice looking results is layers. Don't try to get the result you want in one layer, you just won't be able to get what you want. Try and slowly build the effects by stacking them together. So in this example here, we have a base layer that has very few details and just works as a base for the other elements stacked on top of it. And then we have another layer on top of it in multiply mode just for the specific line effect we want. As you can see, I'm using brown color only in some parts and the rest of the gradient is using white. The white will be completely disregarded when used in multiply mode. In the next layer, we have some smaller noise details, just to add to the detail of the shader. On the next layer, we have a broader color variance. So that's basically the color irregularities you see on a piece of wood. And of course having everything in layers allows us to fine tune the, the, the result. On this layer, we add a bit more color variance. And uh, on this layer here, we try to build a stronger effect for the wood lines. Finally, uh, we have color correction layers in order to achieve exactly the result we want. To recap, things to remember. Adjust the placement and scale of your texture with a texture tool. Build your wood material in layers and slowly build up the effects. Use more than one colors for the wood shader. Wood has a lot of variants, so use a lot of different shades. And of course, look at a lot of references in order to reduce the specific kind of wood you want. Things change drastically between woods, so always have some reference to look at. Now let's uh, have a look at a more finalized example I've prepared. This is a really simple scene with just a few wooden blocks and some wooden planks for the floor. Stacking effects together, for example small scratches through the bump channel and varnishes through alpha masks, we can achieve the result we're after. Don't forget to work on scale with everything being in the right proportions. The wooden cubes should be small, the wooden floor planks should have a similar scale to the real world, and the correct scale to the wooden blocks. Once you do that, you will see that everything else will fall in place. To top it all off, we add a bit of depth of field, and we're all set. And that's it for now. Hope this got you a little bit closer to understanding the wood shader. Hopefully next time you will get to use it, it won't be as frightening. Talk soon!